healthy dose of probiotics. A bubbly probiotic tea for a happy gut. Raw living food. Some gunk in the bottom there. Fermented foods have been around for thousands of years, but they're taking over the limelight now in our all natural wellness focused culture obsessed with gut health. But what does the science say? Are fermented foods actually good for you? I'm getting to the bottom of this with an N of one experiment. I'm going to eat a fermented food diet for 10 weeks, testing my gut microbiome at the beginning and at the end. This is by far the longest diet experiment I've ever done. I really hope I like these funky flavors. Do fermented foods improve the microbiome? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. What exactly are fermented foods? The official definition is foods made through desired microbial growth and enzymatic conversions of food components. Yep, microbes getting busy in your food. The key here is that microbial activity is intentional, which is different from spoilage. This moldy fruit, spoiled. These yumeboshi plums, fermented. Live microbes are required for the process of fermentation, but they don't need to still be living when the fermented food is eaten. So sourdough bread is fermented even though the microbes are killed during baking. However, many fermented foods do have live active microbes when eaten, like this delectable kimchi. I designed my experiment to replicate a study that was published by a team of Stanford researchers who were investigating how fermented foods impact the microbiome. They recruited 18 healthy volunteers and tested inflammation levels in their blood and profiled their gut microbiome, which is a nice way of saying that they sequenced the microbes in their poop. Science, so glamorous. Then they guided their participants to ramp up their fermented food intake to six servings a day over a month, then maintain that intake for six weeks. And what counts as a serving? It could be six ounces of kombucha, kefir, or yogurt, a quarter cup of fermented veggies like kimchi or sauerkraut, or two ounces of vegetable brine. In this study, they did focus on foods with live and active cultures. So other fermented foods like coffee, sourdough, or alcohol didn't count. Six servings of alcohol a day, that would be a totally different study. Then they tested their gut microbiome and blood again at the end of the study. After eating fermented foods, they found lower levels of inflammation and higher diversity in the gut microbiome, together supporting that yes, eating fermented foods is linked with beneficial health markers. So I'm hypothesizing that I will also see reduced inflammation and greater gut microbe diversity. For my baseline sampling, I'm using the Viome Health Intelligence Test. This kit includes equipment to test my blood and poop for a whole array of indicators. Special delivery. Stacking up on my fermented foods, I'm getting a diversity of products with live active cultures. Kefir, yogurt, cultured cottage cheese, kombucha, though I'm avoiding ones with more than 5% juice, and a whole bunch of fermented veggies. So it is day one of my fermented food diet, and I'm gonna start off with a pretty standard breakfast of yogurt with some muesli and mixed berries. Oh wow, that is a... Uh quite a lot of yogurt. So it's my routine to have a big giant salad for lunch every day. And so now I just need to learn how to incorporate some fermented foods into that salad. So today I am starting off with having a bed of mixed greens topped with some farro, a really nice whole grain that I love. Um, then some apple, some celery, and then these fermented carrots that I am so excited to try because did you know you can ferment more than just cabbage? So that's really exciting. Uh, then topped with some with a hard-boiled egg for a little bit of protein, then um, olive oil and balsamic vinegar. And then I'm gonna wash that down with some kombucha. Let's see, so one serving is six ounces. Oh, that's, uh, that's not very much. I think I might double my kombucha serving. Mmm, these carrots are so good. 
So for my last two fermented food servings today, I'm gonna have a snack. So some of these uh, fermented spicy green beans and some kefir. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's about a quarter of a cup. So I'm about a month into my fermented food diet experiment and I think I've really gotten into the swing of things. I've been able to eyeball my serving sizes pretty easily now, so that makes it way less annoying that I don't have to measure things all the time. And I've also developed a whole repertoire of delicious meals incorporating fermented foods, like breakfasts of toast topped with yogurt and sauerkraut, chia seed pudding with kefir and fruit, or a savory oatmeal topped with kimchi, a hard boiled egg, and a sprinkle of sesame seeds. Fermented veggies have really boosted my salad game. I'm loving my mixed greens topped with quinoa, peaches, black beans, fresh corn, and fermented beets with feta, or kamet with cucumber, tomatoes, fermented carrots, and chicken. And I've experimented with using vegetable brine from the bottom of my jar to make a salad dressing with olive oil. At snack time, I'm loving cultured cottage cheese with fruit, fermented olives with some nuts, or just a simple glass of kefir. for the big reveal. So starting at baseline before the uh, experiment, my gut health score was a 56. It looks like that is out of 100. So mediocre performance before. And then after fermented food, oh, my gut health score improved a tiny bit, um, up to 59. Wow, that is a very tiny improvement. Uh, my overachiever self was really hoping that I would have a bigger improvement than that. Ooh, how about this one? Gut active microbial diversity. So at baseline, I had a 96 out of 100. And then after my fermented food diet, I went all the way up to a perfect 100. So that metric seems to be pretty similar to what the Stanford study measured in like a gut microbiome diversity. So, so far my experiment seems to be agreeing with their results. Inflammation response. So at baseline, I had a 62 for my inflammation, rated as good. And then after fermented food, it increased a little bit to 66. Mm, okay, so a subtle improvement. Um, and you know, that does somewhat agree with the Stanford study results too, because they did see improvement in some of their inflammatory cytokine markers. Ooh, let's look at this one, the immune system health. Huh, so my immune system health score at baseline was 75, and then after the fermented food diet, it decreased to a 65, the whole 10 point decrease. Mm, I don't really know what to make of that. Ooh, and what is this? Biological age. The concept of biological age is the aging rate of your cells. Essentially the pace that your cells are accumulating damage. If your cells are aging rapidly, then your biological age may be older than your chronological age or calendar age and vice versa. Okay, so my biological age at baseline was, oh, 39? But that's, mm, that's uh, older than my chronological age of 37. After fermented food. <gasps> oh, wow. Ah, my biological age after fermented food went down to 34. Fermented foods are turning back time by a whole five years. If I keep it up with the kombucha, will I go full Benjamin Button? Okay, so what actually goes into this metric? We assess the activities of your gut microbiome and your cells. Hmm, okay, so that sounds like a bit of a black box. I'm pretty psyched about these results. I will let the fermented foods do my aging for me. Though before fermented foods can claim to be a fountain of youth, it's important to point out that this is still a pretty novel concept and there isn't yet a consensus on how to measure biological age or what it means for health outcomes. Plus, we can't make super strong conclusions from N of 1 studies because we don't know how consistent these results would be between people. But hey, I'll take it. Putting it all together, if we cherry pick which data to look at, we can conclude that my N of 1 study also supports that fermented foods increase gut microbiome diversity and reduce inflammation, just like the Stanford study. But 
it's important to point out that not all of my Viome metrics improved, and some actually got worse, like my gut lining health and butyrate production. And others were categorized as not optimal, like my cellular and energy efficiency and gas production. So this suggests that fermented foods are associated with some improved health markers, but they're not a panacea. There are also some challenges in comparing my results to the Stanford study. First is because different methods were used to profile the microbiome. This gets into the weeds a bit, but the Stanford team primarily sequenced DNA, which tells us which microbes are present, whereas Viome sequenced RNA, which measures which genes are being turned on to essentially tell us what the microbes are doing. So these two different methods are asking slightly different questions, and in turn quantify microbiome diversity in a different way. Second, my Viome scores are comparing me to the rest of the Viome customer base. So a good or not optimal score ranks me compared to other Viome customers as opposed to defined health outcomes. Building on that, it's a bit tough to know whether a score change actually matters for my health. Does a four point increase in my gut health score make a big difference in my health? Lots of health claims focus on the live active probiotics. So are the fermented food microbes moving into my gut to increase diversity? I didn't measure the microbes in my fermented foods, but the Stanford study did. And they did not find the fermented food microbes taking up residence in participants' microbiomes. So that points to something a bit more indirect. One hypothesis is that the microbes create new kinds of beneficial compounds during fermentation, and then eating those beneficial compounds helps support more types of microbes in the gut to flourish. Should you incorporate more fermented foods into your diet? There are other factors to consider when contemplating dietary change in addition to the potential health benefits. First is habit sustainability. Can you actually stick with it? I found it pretty easy and quite delicious to incorporate fermented foods into my diet, and I got all six of my servings for over 90% of my experiment, though sometimes my partner told me that my food smelled like farts. I even managed to stick with it on vacation. As long as I could make my own breakfast and then drink kombucha throughout the day, it was pretty easy, and my family enjoyed our kombucha tastings around the fire. Even though the study is over, I've still been eating a pretty similar amount of fermented foods throughout my day. This is similar to the Stanford study, where they found that participants succeeded in eating all their fermented food servings and kept up their consumption after the formal study phase was over. I think a big part of this is because there are so many ways to eat fermented foods that you can find the mix that works for you based on your preferences, rather than having to follow a rigid or restrictive plan. Second is cost. I purchased all my fermented foods for this study, and it did add up. But you can also make your own fermented foods, and once you get it going, it is likely a lot less expensive. Third is whether there is a risk of overdoing it. Can you eat too much fermented food? Well, the base of most fermented foods are quite healthy to begin with veggies, tea, milk. However, fermented veggies and vegetable brines do have a high amount of salt. Oh, ooh, oh, it's so salty. Although the Stanford study did not find increased sodium consumption during the fermented food diet, if you know you're salt sensitive or are managing high blood pressure, talk to your physician about whether you should watch your fermented veggie intake. I'd also be skeptical about added sugars in some fermented beverages. Generally in kombuchas, the sugar is fermented and broken down by the microbes, so as long as there isn't a ton of juice or sweetener added back in, then it's likely not that concerning. However, there are many varieties of probiotic drinks popping up out there that are essentially soda with a squirt of microbes. So make sure to take a look at the ingredient labels and get a feel for whether the product was actually fermented. Mm. My takeaway from the longest diet study I've ever done is that there seem to be some health benefits of fermented foods on my gut microbiome, inflammation, and even biological age. I really enjoyed eating all types of fermented foods. Well, except for that water kefir. Oh my gosh, that tastes like vomit. So it's a dietary shift that I can see myself maintaining for many years to come. 
That's what science tastes like. Thank you to Viome for supplying me with my testing kits. If you wanna try out your own Anav One experiments with these products, check out my links below. It really helps support Nourishable in digging into the facts behind the fads. If you'd like to support the channel further, consider sponsoring Nourishable on Patreon. We'd be oh so grateful for that glass of kombucha while perusing microbiome studies on PubMed. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.